If you get a call from a number that looks official, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is, because scammers are able to spoof their numbers to look like they're someone that they're not. They can spoof any number. The IRS, the FBI, Microsoft, your mom, anyone. I've been following a team of scammers for several weeks, watching how they do this, and I'm gonna show all of you. But first, let's give you an overview of how this scam works and how they get to this point. Scammers will lure you in with a pop-up on your screen that says your computer is at risk and you need to call Microsoft or Apple to get it fixed. Please call support immediately. Now, how do they do this? Well, they create websites with malicious scripts, and if you stumble across one of these websites, they can force your browser to display this fake pop-up. So now you think that your computer is locked up and you need to call the number, which connects you with the scammers. Thank you for calling support. How can I help you? These types of scammers operate out of India in the middle of the night, and they will tell you that they need to connect you to the Microsoft Secure server, and then they have you download AnyDesk or Ultra Viewer. These programs have nothing to do with any Microsoft Secure server. They're just screen control software. And when you download these programs and give the scammers your ID number, the scammers can now control your computer. And they're just gonna run a bunch of commands and feed you a bunch of BS about how you've got hackers in your network. The problem that you're facing is a cyber attack. And then they're gonna tell you that your bank account might have also been compromised by these foreign intruders. And the way that they convince you of this is to have your bank deliver the bad news. So they'll tell you to find your bank's phone number. What I'm going to do for you is that I'm going to verify this number, then I'm going to transfer your call to your banking institution, which is Bank of America, okay? And then one of their coworkers will call you using the bank's actual number. Now, how are they doing this? Well, the scammers are making their calls with VoIP software. VoIP stands for Voice Over Internet Protocol. The VoIP software converts a phone call from an analog one to a digital signal. All these scammers are making and taking calls using laptops, and the calls are then routed through a private branch exchange, or PBX for short. This is a service that configures internal phone lines within an organization, and by tweaking the PBX files, you can display an outgoing call under any number that you want. I'll demonstrate this for you right now using the scammer's very own software. First, let's find the Apple support phone number. Okay, remember this number. I then had my team members, Xandro and Knight, who are the real brains to uncover all this, use the Apple support number as the display number, and then call my personal cell phone. Let me show you what happened next. Apple's calling. This can't be legal. <laughs> now, let me show you another example of how chaotic this technology can be. My friends at Trilogy Media do live streams almost daily where they call up scammers. Hey, you guys send me an invoice here for 500 some uh, dollars here. And I thought it would be funny to see what would happen if Art got a call from Ashton while he was sitting right next to him, live in front of all of their subscribers. All right, let's mess with Art. Not feeling it. I, you know, I'm usually subscription king, but today I feel like I want to downgrade a little bit. It's a, it's a holiday season coming, so I kind of like need to save a little bit money. He might be distracted because he's talking to a scammer. I will be canceling this order directly from the server. So at this point of time, are you in is he, of he's, Oh, is he, he's noticing something. Oh. <laughs> Uh, He's confused. Hello? Yeah, hello? No. I'm not in front of my computer. Um, look at it, look at um, it, look at it. You know what? Hold on one second. It's happening. Oh, yeah, I can be right now. Yeah, right here. Yeah, I'm right here in front of my computer. Yes. Okay, <laughs> do it again. Now call Ashton from Art. The f Who just called you? Someone is calling me, spoofing you. <laughs> He's calling me, but he's sitting right next to me. He's not calling me. That was really bizarre. bizarre. How the f is my number? I mean, our numbers are everywhere. It's it's not new. But it, it went it went by my spam blocker because it's in my contacts. It's you. And after a few minutes of letting them sweat, I finally came clean. Did I make you wet your pants? Oh, it's terrifying. It was so bad. Was we were screaming. In my boots. And you guys just showed a perfect example of how I can spoof a number and freak someone out. Now, there are legitimate reasons why someone might choose to spoof a number when making an outbound call. Businesses could do this if their employees are doing remote work and they need to display the company's main number. Service providers might spoof a number when making reminder calls so the clients recognize the number. But phone call spoofs are regulated by the Federal Communication Commission and any calls that are spoofed with the intent to defraud or harm are illegal. This technology can be extremely abusive when used the wrong way, because if you get a call from your bank telling you that your account has been compromised and that you need to move money from one account to another, you'll probably do it. 
and it's happening to victims every day in the United States. And by the way, if you ever see something like this pop up on your computer, all you need to do is just clear your cookies, or reinstall your browser, or reset it to the default settings. An even better thing to do is to keep these things from showing up in your browser in the first place. And a great way that you can do this is to install the Surfshark VPN browser extension that will block ads and malware before they even load. It'll even block those annoying cookie requests that nearly every website hits you with. Surfshark VPN is the sponsor of this video and it's a tool that I use on every single one of my devices whenever I'm online. A VPN masks your online identity by hiding your IP address and encrypting your data as you browse the internet, meaning your online activity is hidden from snoops including data brokers. It'll also help you bypass geo restrictions and censorship so you're able to access the content that you love no matter where you are. You can try it on multiple devices so it can be shared with the whole family. I think it's time that you protect yourself against online threats and safeguard your privacy, and you can get a special deal and receive up to six additional months for free when you visit surfshark.deals slash pleasantgreen. Once again, thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this part of the video, and now let's get back to this scam. Now the access that I have allows me to see the first stage of the scam, where scammers convince their victims that their computer has been hacked. And what I want to do is prevent any victim that I can from getting to the second stage where they're contacted by their bank, because then it's completely out of my hands. And getting in touch with these victims is sometimes very hard because scammers will give strict instructions to the victim to not make or receive any calls to anyone since their phone lines have been hacked. Please do not make any upfront call and do not answer or do not receive any another call until we get phased it. Here's one woman that I'm desperately trying to contact, but she will not pick up the phone. Now listen to her reacting to my calls and hear what the scammer tells her to do. Ma'am, do not receive and do not answer. Now I can text this victim, but many times the victim is elderly and they're not going to take the phone away from their ear. But in this particular case, the scammer is connected to the phone via any desk. So he's going to see whatever I text her. And if I come right out and say, you're being scammed, it's going to tip off the scammer that someone's watching and then I might lose the access that I have and I won't be able to save anybody else. So it's always a question of how hard do I try and when is it time to move on to the next victim. Do you bank you have its landmark credit union, right? So I try sending her a text that says it's an emergency and she needs to call me back. I even learned from what I'm seeing that she has a daughter named so I even try to pretend like I'm her. I even go as far as to find her on Facebook, look up her employer, spoof her employer's number and call her in hopes that she'll answer. But this woman is going to ignore everything that I try and I eventually just have to let her go. I did everything that I could and there were other people who needed my help. And the timing of these calls is never ideal. A lot of the time it's when I'm doing something else like feeding my kids lunch or I'm in the middle of a meeting. But when someone's at risk of losing everything, you just drop whatever you're doing and you call. And sometimes you get through. My name is Ben and I am a guy who uh, monitors scammers. And I believe that the people that you're talk talking to, the people that are trying to connect to your computer, are trying to take money from you. And I just want to warn you to hang up on them. Oh, One time I called the number, but it ended up being an insurance agency. So I assumed it was the wrong number. Farmer's insurance is a um, Sorry, I got the wrong number, I apologize. But I double checked the scammer's screen and that was definitely the number. So I called back again. This is um, kind of a strange call, but uh, is there somebody in your office right now that's uh, trying to work with a tech support uh, representative? Yeah. Uh, yes. uh -huh. um, okay, great. I'm calling to let you know that that's a scam. I'm, I need you to just stop what you're doing right now. They're trying to connect to your computer. Then there was this one call with an elderly man, and the dude had been on the phone for nearly an hour and he would not answer my calls. But then his wife got home and immediately recognized what was going on. <laughs> They kept the telephone computer and they told you to call? They locked the computer. Yeah, they do that. And then all you have to do is turn it off, unplug it, and there's nothing. It's a scam. And this is exactly why we make YouTube videos about this, to help people recognize how these scammers operate. This is your friendly reminder to tell your folks and your grandfolks how these scams work. Now, the scariest part about all this is that when they've connected to your computer with UltraViewer or AnyDesk, they then go on to install something that's even more intrusive. This is software that runs quietly in the background of your computer, giving the scammers almost permanent access to your machines, even after you've deleted the screen control programs. Scammers can access your computer anytime and do whatever they want. I've seen them snooping around at personal photos. I've even seen them access Amazon accounts and attempt to buy themselves gift cards. 
So that's why it's so important that I take the time to walk these victims through the process to remove this stuff once and for all. Ultra Viewer, that's the one that she had you download, and then you need to uninstall it if you have it. Let's do disable. Yep, click disable. I even had one encounter where I saw a scammer pull up on an elderly woman's computer right in front of her when he realized he couldn't get what he wanted. Just to be a piece of crap. These are the type of people running these scams. So yeah, after seeing this, I was ready to mess them up. Now the scammer that I'm watching right now is named Amy, or so she calls herself. And when she's waiting for calls, she's looking at jewelry and flights and singing to herself. I got out of singing. Ee, ee, ee. So now I'm going to call her as a confused old woman and see if I can make her connect to my computer. Uh, can you tell me what exactly do you see on your screen? Um, yeah. It just says uh, Windows Defender Security Trojan Spyware. Um, I don't know what any of this means. I didn't. It says please contact Windows Support immediately. Is that? Am I talking to Windows Support? Is this? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. This is from Microsoft Security, and you are talking with a uh, Windows. So now you can see what a scammer sees when they initiate the scam. She's got her software pulled up. She's got her notepad with all of her calls of the day and she's got the handy dandy script to guide her every step of the way. Let's just follow along for fun. All right, ma'am, uh, I have checked in my server. It seems like there is a breach on your network, which means it's an attempt of hacking which has been taken place. Now, Xandro and Knight have pinpointed her location to a spot within a 25 meter radius in Gujarat, India. So it's safe to assume that they are operating somewhere in the Mayfair business park. So now what I'm gonna do is download a picture to my desktop of a street view of the business park that she's working out of. Then when she takes access of the computer, the first thing that she'll see is her place of work. I'm asking, I'm telling you like, uh, are you able to see your ID number and the password number? Yes, it says your ID 74168971. Now here she is about to make the connection. And when she does, she's in for a surprise. So now going back to my screen, you can see that a connection has been established and suddenly Amy goes very quiet because she's seeing something that she totally wasn't expecting to see. Hello? Amy, are you there? Amy? Hello? Amy, how is the internet connection over there at the Mayfair Corporate Park? Do, do we have a bad connection? Oh, she just... <laughs> And we know she's freaking out because she logs right out of her system. So now I think I'll call up her coworkers and see if I can't get them to find her. Thank you for calling technical support. My name is Chris Williams. How may I assist you today? Hi, Chris Williams. Um, I was just wondering uh, if Amy's in today. Um, why do you need her? Well, she was helping my mother earlier and uh, we got disconnected. <laughs> oh, he just hang up. Oh, no. I think they are blocking every call that comes in. Same number. Hi, this is uh, Eileen. I'm looking for Amy. Thank you for calling support. How can I help you? Hey, uh, what's the weather like over there at Mayfair? Park. Are you guys afraid of getting raided? Over there in Gujarat, India, are you afraid of getting raided? Should I send the police over to Mayfair Park? Is that where you're at? Shit. Whoa. <laughs> oh, did anybody hear that? He just said sh Hey, pierogi. Uh, pierogi? I'm honored that you think I'm pierogi, but I'm not pierogi. Okay, what's your name? My name is Ben. Oh, you Ben. Okay. How are you, Ben? I'm good. I just I just want to know how the food is. I just want to know how the food is at the Brijesh Punjabi Food and Egg Corner. Is it any good? Is it good? And then either they blocked all of my Google Voice numbers or they shut down and logged out just like Amy. Anything that I can do to slow down scammers is a win in my book. But I'll continue to keep my eye on these guys. 
Remember to always be skeptical if someone's informing you about threats to your network or your bank accounts, even if it appears to be a call from a legitimate number. It's never a bad idea to hang up and tell them that you want to call back yourself. Anyway, I wanna thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you learned something. How about you share this video with someone who needs to know more about how these scams work? And of course, there's more to talk about, so subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.